Hi everyone, so in this video I'm going to be telling you my top 10 tips for beginner digital artists, but this could really apply to any digital artist because it just depends if you know these tips or not. Um, and I was just making a list of all the things that really helped me when I was first beginning digital art because it can be really, really hard to get the hang of it. And it took me a long time to get the hang of digital art and I'm still learning new things and I still definitely have a lot to improve on. But these are the things that can really, really help you just like improve your workflow and just improve your work in general. So the first thing is, um, you don't need fancy equipment to do digital art. There are tons of free open source drawing programs other than Photoshop that some people would argue are as good as Photoshop that, that you can use and they're completely free. There's one called Krita, which I've seen a few artists use and it looks really, really good. And there's also GIMP, which, uh, which is another free one that is fairly popular and there are probably other ones but those are the, the two that come to my mind that I see a lot of people using. And you also don't need an expensive tablet. You can make art on a really cheap small tablet. So when you're just starting out, find a cheap tablet and use one of the free programs or if you want to use a relatively cheap program like Paint Tool Sci, that's the one I use. It's around 60-ish dollars, 50, 60. That's what it was when I purchased it. It could be more now, I'm not sure, but use a cheap program or a free program like Krita or GIMP. I'll put the links in the description. It's not sponsored, but these are just some really great programs that I've heard of. And I personally use Paint Tool Sci and it's great and it's really lightweight and it runs fairly well on computers because it's so lightweight. And use a cheap tablet. You don't need a fancy Cintiq tablet. You don't, you don't need a large tablet. Just find Find a tablet that is in your budget and that will be good enough for digital art. All you need is a working tablet with pressure sensitivity, of course, but most tablets have that, I think. My second tip are brushes and I see a lot of artists asking other artists like what kinds of brushes they use and honestly, I don't think brushes matter as much as people think they do. It depends on the artist though, because I know for me, I use one brush to do a whole drawing, a whole painting. I use the same tool, the same brush. It's just like a regular brush tool that I've kind of changed the settings on to make it blend a bit more. I use that for everything. And I've heard of other artists that use the same brush for everything and like more professional artists use the same brush for the whole drawing and it's really just a matter of finding a, those few brushes that work really well for you and those will just end up being your go-to brushes so don't worry about finding fancy brushes because honestly you can do a whole painting with one brush another thing is keyboard shortcuts now i don't know all of the keyboard shortcuts for it just depends on what program you're using but there are some like universal ones like Control z is undo and um there's keys you press down to scroll and zoom in and it just makes things easier to have a keyboard while you're working. It makes things so much faster and I didn't know this for the longest time. Well, I knew it, but I didn't really implement it because the first tablet I had, I used it with my laptop and the tablet fit over top of my keyboard without pressing any keys down, just the way my, my laptop was built. So I never used the keyboard when I drew. I just used the express keys on the tablet. Because of that, I never really use keyboard shortcuts. Like I use some because of the express keys, but I didn't use all the other ones. And then, and then I got a Cintiq and I didn't have a keyboard for it. I got that about a year ago and I didn't have a keyboard for it. So I just used the express keys again. But recently I got a keyboard for that and things just got a lot easier. And I also discovered new keyboard shortcuts. Like if you use the, the square brackets, it increases your brush size and decreases your brush size. And that's really, really useful. And just look around and try to find the keyboard shortcuts for your program. Look it up online and try to learn them because it will make everything just so much easier. So another tip, and this has to do with when you're actually doing the painting, is having two views of the painting open at the same time. So you can see it zoomed out really small and you have your window where you work, where you can zoom in, and that way you can always see your painting from a distance because it's really important to look at your work from a distance because if you're so caught up in the little details and you finish this part and you zoom out to look at it, it might not look the way you thought it would because things read a lot differently when you're standing far away from them and that's usually how people look at art anyway is kind of standing back from them. And you can easily do this with traditional art because you just you just take a few steps back and look at your painting. But with digital art, you have to constantly zoom out. So for this, you just make a new view of your drawing and have it 
it might be on the viewfinder you might have to make your own new window to see your drawing from a distance and that is really really helpful and i would 100 percent recommend that also say you're doing more of a painting kind of drawing rather than like flat colors if you if you do the sketch and then um, do the base colors underneath the sketch and then you make a new layer on top of that to start painting over it make new layers as you go so you can check your progress so that if you're about to make a big change make a new layer paint your new change on that layer and that way you can flip between that layer and the old layer and see if it looks better or worse and that way you can easily um, go back to another step of the drawing and rework it or erase parts that you don't like that you did because if you do everything on one layer it's hard to see like how your drawing is progressing and it's hard to tell if you're making it better or worse so definitely make new layers as you go over top of the painting so you can check your progress okay here's something that i just discovered because of an artist that i watch on twitch and um it's a program called pure ref I think that's how you say it but basically it's a little window that stays open on top of all your other windows so you can always see your reference pictures and you just drag and drop your reference pictures into it you can save each like collage of pictures zoom in zoom out move them around and um, it stays on top of your drawing program so that way no matter what you can always see it and it's just a really good way of having your reference photos out because it's almost as if it's like pinned in a certain spot and you can drag it around if you right click with your mouse and resize the window and place it wherever you want and then your reference pictures will stay there so i'll put the link to that in the description it is such a useful program not sponsored but it is great i really really highly recommend using this another thing that kind of applies to all art in general but it's something that can that can kind of trip you up in digital art is make sure that you're shading with different colors of the same hue so if you're going to be coloring something and say it's blue don't just shade it with a darker blue shade it with a darker reddish blue or a darker purpley blue and just combine as many like combine um more than one color into your into one color so so it's not just blue in the whole color it's like different hues within it it just makes everything a lot more lifelike Another thing that can help you when you're painting digitally is using different layer modes. So like overlay, screen, multiply, like all those different modes do something. They can really help you decide where to put your lighting. It, they can help you easily darken a whole area of your drawing or easily lighten the whole area. I'm going to be doing like a little demonstration on the screen here on Paintal Sai, kind of showing you what each of the layer modes look like. There are two versions of Paintal Sai right now. I usually use version 2, but the layer modes I don't think are finished on version 2. They just don't seem quite right, so I'm just showing you on the first version of Paintal Sai. And they all can kind of add a different effect to your drawing depending on what color you put in. You can lower the opacity of them. Overlay is really useful for finding new possible colors you can use or just like changing the mood or the atmosphere of your drawing. So I would highly recommend experimenting with the overlay layer mode and multiply can help you shade things but make sure that it's not making everything look too gray. Make sure that you're using different colors um, to shade with like purples or blues instead of just a darker version of the same color. Another tip is to flip your canvas as you work because this helps you notice the flaws in your drawing because it could look totally fine one way but when you flip it it'll look kind of weird and lopsided so you want to make sure that it looks good both ways um, left and right flipping it back and forth make sure that it looks good as you flip it that's why you might see in some speed paints where the artist drawing flips back and forth as they work on it it's because they're making sure that it looks good as a whole composition forwards and backwards another tip is to make a layer over top of all your other layers and put it on color mode some programs might not have this but put it on color mode and make it like a gray or black or something without any color and then you'll be able to see your drawing as just values and this is really important because you always need to check your values when you're painting it should have a good balance of darks to white so black and white it should have a good balance between those and if it looks good as a black and white drawing then it then the colors you've chosen are probably good as well because the more contrast it has it just has a better impact overall and it can look more more realistic and it's just always good to have a balance of your values because it's it just makes the whole drawing look a lot better and more professional i think i might have more than 10 tips now but another one is to if you find it hard to sketch digitally um bring in traditional sketches 
to your digital program. So you can take a picture of your traditional sketch, bring it in, and then trace over that as your sketch or as your line art. And you can even colorize that using overlay or other layer modes and paint over it as if it's a as if it's a digital and traditional drawing, like a tradigital. That's I think that's what people call it. So I hope you learned something from this video. These are just the 10 things that I use all the time when I'm doing digital art and the 10 things that I would highly recommend to anyone starting off with digital art or if they just want to learn like a new tip. These are some of my go-to answers if people ask me for assistance or advice about digital art. So I hope you found them helpful. Let me know if you have any more tips in the comments um, and thanks for watching.